Okay, now for the biomechanics of the legs. And boy, was this a hard one for me to put together. Because training the legs is very complex. What's happening in the body during this? Now, there's a couple things that I find particularly important training the legs, and that's what I'm going to explain to you in here. You'll hear me talk about a couple of the cues while you're training. Keep the chest up, slide the butt back, and the role that I do is explain this to you briefly so you have an idea as to what I'm talking about. Because being able to make a picture in your mind as to what I'm talking about is going to allow you to specifically train your muscles and avoid injury. Hopefully you've watched my posture series and you have an understanding of what standing up straight means. But I want to briefly go over again the curves of the spine. You see we have an inward curve, an outward curve, and then another inward curve here in the low back. Now an important cue you're going to hear me say while you're training is that you want to keep the ribs up. See if the ribs are down, what happens? Now our back is flat. And I'm about to tell you why that's important to not have a flat back. But you see when the ribs are down, the back is flat. I'll tell you to raise those ribs. As you raise those ribs, it helps maintain this curve in the low back, and that's an important point. Now the important part is that we keep the curve of our lower back. You see, the curve of this lower back actually distributes our weight through our hips and onto our pelvis, or onto our pelvis and through our hips. When the back is flat, no longer is the stress back on the joints. You see, when we're arched here, look up real close, you see the joints of the back. The joints of the back are way back here. The joints are way back here. When the back is flat, the pressure is now straight down on the disc and not back here on the joint. You see the joints all loose. As you raise the chest, the weight goes back onto the joints here and off of the disc and helps you distribute the weight through the hips properly. So that's an important part to having that chest high because you want to maintain that curve of the lower back. Now another important part here is what happens with the pelvis here. And this is mainly when we're going to sit down or when we're going to bend over. So specifically we're talking about the squat and the deadlift here. I'll go over to the other hamstrings and extensions and curls and everything uh, where this posture is also important. But when I show you how this moves, you see as we bend forward, this top part of the pelvis pulls down. And then the sacrum, this part here, comes up. This part comes down and up. It's, there's really not that much movement in here. But this joint allows us to be able to bend over, sit down, and walk. But there's not much motion to here. You see, if we look at it at the bottom, this deep actually opens up at the bottom here. So we want to maintain the lumbar curve that stays back on the joints, helps us distribute the weight to the pelvis. Otherwise, the back is flat, putting straight down pressure on the disc and nerve. The ilium moves down as the sacrum moves up when we go to bend over. Now this is the job of the hamstrings. The hamstrings attach right here on the back, the back of the pelvis here. So the hamstrings, when they contract, they actually pull this pelvis down. So as we bend forward, the pelvis comes down and the butt comes up, or the back part here. And that's where you'll see me tell you to slide the butt back. Now a lot of this takes hip flexibility. And we'll talk about hip flexibility, but tight hamstrings are going to hold this pelvis down. When this pelvis gets held down, it flattens the low back. Can you see what happens there? This, the hamstrings are constantly tight, so they're holding this pelvis down. So then we're not able to distribute the weight properly through the hips. We're going to lean forward instead of sliding our butt back, and now that's going to put sheer pressure and sheer stress through the spine. Unlike if we had an arch flow back here and you slide that butt forward. See, to slide that butt back, that the low back has to be arched. When we're tucked down like this, we don't have any hip flexibility. We can't push back because that pelvis is down. This also weakens the glutes because the glutes help extend this back when we go to stand up. So the important thing here is maintain that arch by sliding that butt back. I'm going to show you what I mean with that. Okay, let me show you what that looks like on me. Now you'll hear me say throughout all this series that we have this butt out, nipples out posture. Can you see how I'm actually sliding the butt back as I pull the ribs through? 
Now, we don't want to tuck it under. Tight hamstrings are going to hold this down. I hear people tell me all the time, gosh, my butt's really gotten flat. Well, these hamstrings tighten that down. They hold the pelvis down and weaken the glutes, and that's why your butt looks flat. But now when you bend over to do a deadlift, you're gonna, you can't push that butt back, so you're going to bend over like this, and that's going to blow your back out. You want to have the butt out, nipples out posture. As I go to bend down, you see how I'm stretching that butt back and maintaining that chest high. And then as I pull up, I squeeze the glutes, but I still pull the, pull the chest through. When you pull up, you don't want to drop the butt. When I say squeeze the butt, we're going to slide the butt back, pull the chest through. So slide the chest over, slide the butt back, chest over, pull through with the ribs. Now look at in the back. As I bend over, I'm going to push those hamstrings out while I maintain my chest high. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to squeeze with the glutes. You see how I squeeze the glutes? I'm not touching the butt under the glutes are squeezing and it's helping me pull the ribs through. It's helping me pull the ribs through. I'm not dropping it like this. I'll see a lot of people do squat and they'll be like, ugh. No, I'm going to come down, ugh. Chest high and squeeze the glutes. Okay, let's go on to the femoral angle, which is another important aspect to training the legs. And this has to do with having the knee out. Okay, now I have this picture also there. I'm not sure what number it's labeled yet, but I'll have that there in the captions. But what I want to talk about is the femoral angle here. Can you see how this is our femur, the long bone, where all of our quadriceps are? Now look out here. You see how this angle comes out? And our knees actually come in naturally. This has a natural tendency of our knee to come in. We actually have more muscles pulling our leg in than we do outwards, which was to be expected. If we had more muscles pulling out, then we would be pulled into a split. But can you see here with this angle, the knee naturally goes in. And most of the muscles are going to be pulling the muscles in, the knee in. So having the knee out is going to be an important aspect. And let me show you this on myself. Okay, now let's talk about the femoral angle we're talking about again. Now, this is very important because that joint hangs out like that that gives us a free range of motion in the hip, particularly to be able to circumduct our leg. This helps us as we walk through our swing phase, pulls our leg around. So that joint actually gives us the ability to be able to walk and have a vast range of motion in the hip joint. Now, just looking at that picture, you see, naturally, we kind of look like this. And you can see in the picture that I showed you that that's without all the muscles attached to it. Now, to get the muscles to be able to contract, we need to get the knee over the hip joint. Right now, it's here. But for us to be able to lift our leg, you see we have to lift it out in front of our hip joint here. But it's over here. So the important thing is going to be to spread the knees. You see, I'm not really spreading my feet apart. It's not coming so much from my feet, but flare the quads and push them forward. See, you spread them and then lift them. So, and that's coming from the hip joint. Spread them, spread them and lift them, spread them and lift them. You see? So when you're training the quads and the hamstrings, you're gonna to wanna to have that knee out. And I'm gonna tell you why. I wanna show you another example of this where we're talking about the thigh flaring out. We actually have the sartorius, which I put the muscle up there, uh, a picture of that muscle up there, and the TFL. They're actually pulleys that help move this leg up to where it needs to be. And it starts to initiate the leg and the thigh for the quads to now start working. So that's when we're going to flare that. Now the girth of the leg comes from the hamstring. I'll see people and they'll say, show me your legs, and they'll go like this. And this is how they're posing their legs. Now, one thing I know is that they're doing totally their extensions with their toes up all the time. My knees straight. Look at my quad there. You see, I can just look at how someone's, what someone's legs look like. And that's what they're doing. They're not flaring the leg and pulling it up. Flaring, it's actually coming from the knee. We're going to pull it through. And then the muscles up here at the hip joint are automatically going to line all this up. Let me show you what it looks like. So let me show you where the girth of the leg comes from the hamstring. You see, for me to get this out, I really have to have the knee out, both knees out, for me to be able to see the 
the hamstring and the girth of my leg. Let me show you from behind. So, you'll probably see people on stage two, you're posing their hamstrings like this. Now, I can tell here that that means that they're curling just like this when they're at the gym. Now, watch, look at what this looks like. And now, let me flare my knee out on both of them. Now, wouldn't you rather your hamstrings look like that? You see, that knee has to come out, and that's what gives you the girth to your leg. You see the difference there? So that's why we're going to be flaring the legs when we're doing the extensions. When we're doing the curls, we're really going to lock in there. I'm not going to be locking my butt down. My chest is still high and the knees are going to be out. Rah, rah, like that. Okay, let's talk about hip and ankle flexibility when it comes to training the legs. And I already showed you on the skeleton how tight hamstrings or a flat back here, it, the hamstrings tighten, flatten the low back. It also tightens the hip flexors in the front and weakens the glutes. You see, so when you get this going on, you don't have the flexibility in the hips to be able to round your back back and push the butt back. So that's all hip flexibility. If you go over the flexibility series, I have a lot of exercises in there for that, and I'll also be doing a hip flexibility series. But hip flexibility is going to be important, especially when you're doing your squats or your deadlifts. So, to be able to push that butt back and keep that chest high. You'll hear me say you can kind of jackknife or raise your peacock feathers. I'm talking about this part. We don't want to be arching, arching the low back. Look what happens here. Now my knees above my ankles. Now there it comes in a lot of calf flexibility also. Because tight hamstrings are also going to cause your calves to be tight. So when you're going down, even if you're going down and then pick something up, your foot's going to lift, lift up. When your uh, calves are well, too many exciting things to say about the calves. You know, anytime you're lifting up the toe, you're going to be working the calf. The only difference is that the gastroc attaches to the knee, the soleus does not. So the gastroc has something to do with the knee, and the soleus only has to do with the foot coming up. But uh, ankle flexibility is going to be important when you're going down in the squat to try to keep that knee over the ankle. And you see when you go down, uh, you'll see a lot of people get in here. Their knees are in and way over their ankles. The big thing to, be, to get that flexibility and to work on your hip flexibility, you're going to have to push those knees back and out as you squat down. So you're going to spread it apart and back down. Now there is some range of motion for the knee to go above the ankle, but you don't want to be getting all the way down here. You see now that's too far. Anytime your foot's come off the ground, you're too far here. So naturally, to get that bounce off the ground, the knee's going to be in front of the ankle a little bit. But we want to get rid of the, this or this or really coming forward with the knees. And um, like I'll have some ankle flexibility stuff with the hip series also. But working on the flexibility of the ankles and realizing you don't want to be coming on your toe. You always want to be driving through the center of the heel. Not the center of the heel here, the center of the foot, the center of the ankle, where it's strong. Okay, let's get started.